Hello and welcome to Elliot's British Life and today I am going to be showing you how to get that David Austin look. I ordered two different types of roses for two terracotta pots and I'm going to put three in each pot. Now that is a trick of David Austin roses. When you see those amazing, fabulous photographs of a big, massive bloom, please know that the trick is not just one rose bush per pot, it is actually three. Now, right, further ado, we are going to open the package which came a few days ago. Once your bare root roses arrive in these bags, as long as they stay sealed, you can wait for up to two weeks before you plant them. They do come in a branded David Austin paper bag, which says, handle with care, contains live plants, breeders of exquisite English roses since 1961. On the reverse, it says your rose has arrived. Keep in a cold place with the inner bag sealed until you are ready to plant. Plant within two weeks of receipt and enjoy beautiful blooms come summer. Handle with care, contains live plants. For planting and rose care advice, see enclosed planting guide or speak to one of our rose experts. There is a phone number and all contact information, including website address. So without further ado, let's get into them. I'm just using a pair of ordinary kitchen scissors just to cut across the top. Cut quite high, obviously. Here they are. So this is how they come out of the bag. Let me just pop those to one side just a moment and um, get the information out. There is a plastic sealed bag contained within, which obviously has all of the information, all of your order personal information. There is also a David Austin Rose planting guide, which I will show you later. So first of all, step one, if you are planting a bare root rose, is to rehydrate your rose in a bucket of water for a minimum of two hours prior to planting. That is my next step. I already have a bucket of water set up to go. This does differ if you are planting a potted rose. You need to give that a really good water prior to planting. All of the other steps contained within this booklet apply if you are planting bare root roses in the ground. I am not, I am planting in pots. Okay, so I bet you will really want to know which two types of David Austin roses I chose. I chose the Queen Mother and Princess Alexandra of Kent. This is the exciting bit. Now obviously, you know, be careful of your fingers, do wear gloves. I'm not at the moment because I find it quite hard to feel within gloves, but Obviously, for safety reasons, when you do it, follow the guidelines, wear gloves. So this is how they come. As you can see, uh, they have quite long roots and they come together all sort of bound up and you need to separate them. That's the first step. Today is actually the 22nd of April here in the UK and we are still able to buy bare root roses and plant them. It's still not too late. However, if you look, they are already starting to shoot. So I would probably say this is almost as late as what you need to leave it to if you want to plant bare root roses. Of course, planting guidelines do differ depending on which zone in the world you are in. So I'm now separating them into the two different types. This one is Queen Mother. So I will put that one over there. Queen Mother. Uh, Princess Alexandra, Princess Alexandra, Queen Mother, Princess Alexandra. I should also say that I am actually located in Shropshire here in England. Now Shropshire is of course the home, the homeland of David Austin Roses. Right, so it's now time to give them a really, really good soak. Um, I filled the bucket quite, quite deep with water. Like I say, about two hours should be the right amount. So just pop those in. Um, there you go. They will all go in if you can if you can remember the little um, size little size bundle they came in. So they will all go in. There you go. And then I will put Princess Alexandra of Kent on this side. And all it does is just really really give them a good, well needed rehydration before they go into their pots. Oh, 
Okay, so there we have it. I will now leave those for two hours. This is the compost that I am using today. I am using Westland John Inns number three, mature plant compost. Now, of course, any really, really good quality rose and shrub compost will do. Okay, so this is one of the two terracotta pots. They are both the same, which I will be using. I have the soil already ready to put in. At the bottom, there is a good drainage hole and I have put some crocs on the bottom. You can use stones, chippings, crocs, anything you like just to aid with the drainage. I've already pre-filled with some soil and that should be deep enough. It's been two hours and they are ready for planting. Okay, so I've started putting them in. It is roughly the right depth. And what I want to do is get them really, really evenly placed. So obviously when they grow, they give that really full look coverage. Now it doesn't matter if the roots get slightly tangled because obviously three in a pot, it's going to happen. So once you are happy with how they are placed, you can go ahead and fill in the soil. thing I did forget to mention is a mycorrhizal fungi which comes like this you can get it in different forms this is the one from David Austin Roses you sprinkle some of the powder on the roots before putting in the pots but I will show you with the they are all planted what I have done is firm them down with my hand to make sure there is no airspace left between the roots and the compost when I water them it will compact it even more now time to place Princess Alexandra of Kent exactly the same process as before and I will show you what to do with the fungi. Once you are happy with the root placement just take your fungi and just sprinkle it over the roots and it will help them to root. And it's time to fill in the soil. And what I like to do is to get some soil behind them just to make them stand a little bit proud of the edge of the pot, which is quite easy to do if you just bring them forwards and push it down behind. Like I say, it looks like a lot of compost, but by the time you've pressed it all down and compacted it um, and watered as well, it pretty much goes down. Okay, so it's now finally time to water. Give a full can per pot. Rainwater or tap is completely fine. to give them a really good water. And of course, do the same again with the other. So another tip I would say is that once all the water has actually sunken into the compost, because this is really dry compost, you can see if you need to top up with any more additional compost. I think we are okay here. And now that they are planted, a little word on aftercare. They should be okay in terms of feeding for the first year in that compost. However, after the first year, you need to make sure that during the growing season, you feed them. Any type of really, really good rose and shrub fertilizer should be okay. I personally 
use a liquid feed. I normally follow the instructions and I put two caps of this into one watering can of water and then I go around and water all of my pot roses once a week. I use miracle Grow Rose and Shrub. You can use whichever one you like. Just make sure that you do feed them. In the first year, the roses will begin to establish. The second year, you should see an improvement and by the third year, they should be in full bloom. However, you will get roses in the first year. You will have a really, really good display. I did last year. Some of you may have seen my previous Planting Bare Root David Austin Roses video. I will go and show you what they are now like in the second year, shortly before they flower. Just so you can see the situation of the terracotta pots, they are either side of the doors of my greenhouse. The first one that we are approaching is actually Princess Anne. Now, Princess Anne was the first to flower last year. So this, this by the way, is the second year that these have been in these fairly small pots. So I knew that when they were in these pots that I would have to feed them at least once a week. So we can see that they are beginning to bud. So Princess Anne, I think, will be the first to flower again. She was absolutely gorgeous. She gave a magnificent display last year. Next, we have in the middle, William and Catherine. Again, having really, really good growth. I did cut these back in February. In February in the UK, it's a really, really good time to cut back your roses. I did cut them back to almost the rootstock. And third but not least we have Anne Boleyn. Now Anne Boleyn is a little bit behind the others but perhaps that might be due in part because I cut her back the hardest. So here we have Anne Boleyn who is coming along very very nicely. Of course I am unable to show you the Queen Mother and Princess Alexandra of Kent today in today's video in full bloom. So if you check back to my weekly vlogs which I post every single week on this channel you will see the progress of those roses and all of my others and in fact my whole garden throughout the summer. Thank you for watching this video. If you have enjoyed it then please give it a big old thumbs up. Don't forget to share on social media and also hit the notification bell so that you know whenever I upload a new video. Also, please do remember to subscribe to the channel. So from me in Shropshire, goodbye.